Hi folks and welcome to the next video. I'm sure every photographer in the world probably recognizes this photo. Herb Ritz. I recently heard an interview with him on YouTube and he said this shot came together in a matter of minutes. Now a lot of it depends on the models. Of course they have a previous relationship, they have some kind of a friendship I heard on that video and that really helps the shot. Now, what I want to do, since this photo inspired me so much when I was a young kid, I saw this photo and I was just blown away, just like every other photographer probably was. So, I always want to do tributes to this kind of a thing if I photograph people in groups. Now, we're going to try to attempt this. Of course, I'm going to do my own thing with it. I'm not going to try to copy this photo because it would be impossible. You know, you have a very special relationship with the photographer and the people in this shot, so things really have to be organic and original to get a great shot that you could really like. So let's go. This is going to be a wonderful day here, and let me show you how I did this. So although I've done several workshops in this location, and I've shot here before, the issue was finding the right composition this particular shot is one of my specialties, let's say. It's one of my favorite shots to do. I have lots of different shots with different people in these positions, and I really love it. Getting the right light for everyone was a challenge. In this particular situation, of course, obviously I had shadows under the eyes, having the light behind them like this. I didn't like that. Also, you're going to notice we have some shoes under their head because in this shot, uh -huh. I think one of the secrets is to not have your head totally against the floor. What happens is there's a tendency to see up the nostrils and not have a favorable angle on the face. So we have like shoes under their head so they can have their face more facing the camera. But the light still wasn't exactly the way I wanted it here. So I'm getting shapes. I'm trying to come up with shapes for them to pose in and trying to play with the shadows and light. Para quizá poder alzar la cabeza un poquito. Sé que es incómodo. Okay, we're, we're trying to find the correct positions for everybody. Uh, I'm trying to find the hair positions too, it's not so simple. I think it's looking great though. Vamos a poner los pies en la posición más o menos. sort of what the vibe is going to be and uh, I think it's going to work so let's give it a try. As you will see here I'm using my flip out screen once again. I think it's an invaluable part of these types of shots here. The angles are very difficult to get to. So as you can see, I'm using my 2470 and standing on this ladder. Now, one of the issues was lens distortion. Lara, the model in the middle here, has really long legs and the distortion of the camera was making them even longer. So I had to really try to control the angle of the camera and hold it as parallel to the floor as possible, which wasn't easy. This pose wasn't exactly working, but I felt that it was getting closer and closer to what we needed. So I'm trying to find another composition now. And I'm going to try this uh, like an uh, opposite thing too. So we've got one 
gray bodysuit and then two of them black ones. So any juxtaposition in shapes and forms, you know, like that, we're going we're gonna to try to play with. As soon as I moved everything to this side, I was starting to like it a lot better. The light was better. I was able to get some shadows and light combinations. Now you see here that we've got the shoes under everyone's head so that I can have a nice angle on the face. Getting the shoes out of the shot was very important. Where the hair was, was helping to hide the shoes. It's not all glamour all the time on these shoots as you can see we managed to do with whatever we have to get the right things happening so i was controlling here i was controlling the shadows and the shapes of the bodies so that we have a nice three-dimensional feel in the shot especially from above where things can tend to look kind of flat <laughs> With each modification to the pose, I felt I was getting closer and closer to what I wanted. The dimension, the three-dimensional feel to it was real important to me, so the only way to create that is with shadows. By tilting them over to one side, each model from the opposite side of the other, I could get more shadows. That would increase my sense of depth in the photo. I still felt like I was fighting lens distortion to a certain degree, so turning Lara's legs in like that helped a lot with dealing with the distortion and making everyone a little more even lengthwise. I think if you have a starting point of inspiration, the work can evolve from there and turn into something else. It'll still be great. This is an extension almost of the shots that I usually do. The height and the distance from the models were helping with the lens distortion as well as the poses. I think we really got some great stuff here. Classic uh, kind of shot, white shirts against this real simple background sitting on these these steps here. It's gonna, all going to be black and white in the end, so it should be really nice. We've got the one uh, gray thing, gray bodysuit, but it, whatever, it's going to be black and white. I think. So let's find the poses first, yeah? So again, I felt like with this new area, new location here, I needed to start all over. Looking for the right composition, looking for symmetry between the models. 
and looking to establish most of all some kind of relationship between them. So I want, I want to find like a nice composition, some flowing lines, you know, it's not so easy. Okay, study. One of the first things you'll notice in a group shot is that people have a tendency to form consistent patterns. So if you don't have a clear idea of what you want, people will just fall into a, a pattern. And that's not exactly great sometimes. So you have to really be aware of all that and separate them, put them each in individual kind of poses and have the shapes forming in the way you want. At least that's my experience. Now this might sound kind of crazy to some, but as a male photographer, in the beginning of my career, I never thought I'd have to worry about women's fashion, hairstyles, clothing, you know, I never really thought that I would end up having to know a little bit at least about this, what looks good on them and how it makes them feel. So after a while, you kind of get a knack for it, but it is something that you kind of have to get used to. Knowing about clothing, hairstyles, this is, I think, really important in any portrait or any type of shoot that you would do for it fashion or catalog work even I think it's a very important thing so I want to get I want to try to get some symmetry here with these with all these legs uh, you know shapes shapes it's important to get the shapes I think so that the eye doesn't wander in the composition I think the background is going to be fine and uh, I, I kind of like it I, I like it so far I like it. Okay. I have to confess at this point that I wasn't too happy with these positions. This position in general, the light was coming from the window, hitting them from the side, wasn't exactly making them look as beautiful as they are. So I kept trying for a while before I gave up completely on this spot, but eventually I did move them. types of situations. As you can see, again, if you don't have a clear idea, people just tend to fall into a pattern with their posing. That's not what I really wanted. I wanted to have shapes and different positions and to establish the relationship between them, maybe make it seem like they were friends, kind of like in the photo that Herb Ritz took, the one that we saw in the beginning. Now I changed a little bit the position of the models here to see if something could be done about that. Not the greatest shot I ever took, I think, but getting closer to what I want. You do get lucky on occasion and get a great shot in only a few minutes, but a lot of the times it's hard work to make it happen. Now at this point, I felt like we were all getting kind of stuck, so I needed to break things up, shake things up, so I had them stand and move closer to the window to see if we can get some backlighting happening, maybe some nice contours, silhouettes, that type of thing. So check this out, this is what happened.
And since we got some overhead shots, I did another one of my favorites, some low angle shots. So, did I achieve my goal of getting anywhere near that Herb Brits shot? I don't know, but the great thing about photography is that you can experiment, try again and again until you get something that really moves you. In this case, I really like this shot from above and I really like the other shots that I've got that I showed you guys here. So I hope you'll check in for the next video and maybe we'll try this again, who knows. Make sure to subscribe, hit like, and please leave your comments below. Let me know which shot was your favorite shot. I also want to send a big thank you to Studio Mannequin, a great modeling agency here in Argentina, who provided the wonderful models I worked with today. See you on the next clip.